Hey folks, I have a little problem today. So those of you who are familiar with Meshtastic devices may recognize this as a Lilygo T-Beam. Great little device. I'm having a lot of fun with these things. However, I've developed a problem with this particular T-Beam. And you guys will quickly be able to see what that problem is if I just jiggle this SMA connector. All four of the shield pins have either broken or broke loose of the solder joints. Now the good news is the center pin is still connected. I took my multimeter, uh, put it on continuity test, put uh, one of the leads in that center conductor right in the middle of that connector there, took the other lead, tested that center pin, and I still have continuity. So I've got continuity at the center pin. I just have no continuity, or at least I don't have consistent continuity at the shield. I am, I'm, I'm going to try to just uh, jury rig this. So I could desolder these large pads here for the battery, but I don't even have a replacement connector here to really kind of do that justice, right? I could desolder all five pins, pull that sucker out, put a new connector in, resolder all five pins and be on my way. But what I'm going to try to do, since I don't have an extra connector, and some of these pins are actually broken, is I'm just going to blob up some solder on the outside casing of this of this connector and I'm gonna let's see if I can't get this a little closer so you guys can see that a little better. I'm gonna try to solder that to what I have available there around those through holes. And we're gonna see if that gets me by. I think the culprit in all of this is this extra large antenna or this better antenna that I installed to replace this antenna that came with it from Lilygo. So uh, as you can see, this other antenna is quite a bit larger and I think it just puts too much stress on that SMA connector, or maybe that SMA connector was loose when I got it. I'm not quite sure. This is also going to give me the opportunity to try out this little Pine 64 Pine Soul smart soldering iron. So I bought this a little while back. Haven't had a need to break it out and actually give it a try yet. And uh, this should be a good test. I'm sure that SMA connector is going to pull some heat. So we'll see if this thing can do the job. All right, let's get to it. Hey folks. So let's talk about something here before we get too far down the line. First of all, I recognize we're asking a lot from this little uh, Pine Sill Pine 64 soldering iron, right? This is a high mass component in this SMA connector. It's a high mass component I've got no flux. This is kind of a worst case scenario. This is this is almost a field repair type situation. I recognize that we're asking a lot from this soldering iron. And look, this is not great technique. Again, we've got no flux. This isn't how you would really want to approach this, but I was just trying to get this doggone thing fixed. I don't have any extra SMA connectors to replace it and do it the right way. And I wanted to try out this, uh, this pine silt. Uh, I just wanted to throw those things out there. I'm sure I'm gonna get some comments about the approach that I took to try to get this done. Hey, I recognize all those things, but you know, sometimes you don't have the perfect scenario. Sometimes you don't have the iron with the right tip or one that can create the amount of heat that you need for a large component. Sometimes you don't have flux. 
when you're doing a field repair, you're just trying to get the job done. So that's the approach I'm taking when uh, trying to repair this T-beam. All right, let's see how it goes. All right, I'm going to use a PD source. With this. And get that to focus. And we'll see if we can get this thing heated up. Oh yeah, rapidly climbing. Okay. Looks like she's ready to go. Man, that's quick. Yep. This might be a futile exercise. something there Let's see if I can do something similar on the back I know this is difficult to see but um, I'll do the best I can here He's hot. You know, it's pretty solid. I should probably stop there, but I'm going to try to also run some along this side and see if I can't make it just a little better.
Well, it's certainly solid on the board. I think I think I'm going to hold it right there, and you can see I kind of ran a almost a bead of solder, almost like a weld down the front, along the side, and along this back. And I'm just trying to attach that those ground pads, right? Those four ground pads. Try to give it something that's going to give it some stability. And it actually feels pretty solid. So I'm going to test it and make sure I'm not shorting that center pin. There's no short between the center pin and the shield, so that's good. Uh, I still have good continuity between the center pin and that metal pin that you can see underneath. So we're going to put the battery back in and uh, see if this thing will fire up. These batteries are tough to get in. Here we go. I see some lights. So it's not complete junk. I'm going to put the original antenna back on it here. And it appears to be working just fine. All right. So I did have a few people ask me what this spec five case looks like on the inside so while i had this ripped apart i thought i'd go ahead and share that with you guys uh, so it comes with this kind of middle carrier piece that the board itself screws into so they give you these four screws with the kit um, it's a you know it's a great fit the uh the screws line right up with the board And then, in addition to that, you've got this back board, or this back piece. Okay, let me just show you guys what this looks like. Again, this is the part that has the clip kickstand. You know, you can see it's really well done. It's solid and really clean. And then you have just the the uh the top portion okay so pretty straightforward i've got this guy back in action i'm gonna rock this little oem antenna here for a bit and we'll see how that solder joint holds up i am gonna order some spare sma 90 degree through hole connectors so that i can do a replacement on that if that breaks loose. It certainly wasn't the best solder job, so I could certainly see it breaking loose. But who knows? Maybe it'll maybe it'll be just fine with this smaller antenna that doesn't put as much stress on that on that joint. This thing worked pretty well. Pretty happy with it. Heats up quick. It's great to use with this power delivery brick, this PD power brick. Uh, nice little combo. Certainly, this is something I keep in my pack right now. Anyhow, so yeah, I think this is going to be a nice little addition to the travel kit. All right, gang, hope you enjoyed this, and we'll see you next time. 7 3.